Okay, so I recently did this video showing Fenix Linux showing excellent YouTube playback on a Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 4 YouTube playback isn't its strong suit, but this is playing at 1080 and uh, it's not dropping very many frames at all. And uh, if I go through the comments, so if I quit out of this and click on my Fenix Pi Plasma video, so it's this comment from Football Tech. Uh, the video is playing smooth because the video is using different codec to play the video. It was using AVC1 as codec instead of using VP9 H264 if I also uses the same thing. So a while back I did this video uh, comparing Stadia to Xbox One and I noticed that my upload didn't really play back in great quality uh, and, it, and this was on all devices. I usually watch uh, a lot of YouTube on my Apple TV box and uh, it just wasn't crisp and it was definitely more compressed. And AVC is more compressed, but obviously that means it runs better. Uh, and to be fair, if you're a certain distance away and you're watching YouTube, you're not gonna notice it. But if you go really close to the screen, VP9 is definitely better, but the Pi just isn't capable of playing VP9 at really good quality. I also did this video, get higher quality mobile upload. I realized if I uploaded my videos at 1440, uh, I would get VP9 codec and they definitely look better. But some other people have commented that it doesn't work for them. So I'm not sure if it, it, it makes a difference on how many subscribers you have. But let's go back to that comment anyway. And because uh, it's, it's an interesting thread. So I put there must be more optimization at work. In my experience, H.264FI isn't as effective. H.264FI, uh, you can choose 30 FPS instead of 60, but it still wasn't as good as the Fenix Linux YouTube. Uh, and then John Nada's comment was install user agent switcher in Chromium and set to Android KitKat. Android KitKat is really old, I think it's 4.4. Um, and uh, so that really was interesting and I've been waiting to try this. I haven't tried it yet, I figured I'd do it in a video. So I've got uh, Ubuntu on this M.2 drive and I figured I'd give it a try on that. So let's quit out of this because obviously Phoenix already works so there's no point in changing it on that. And uh, so I was using an SSD with Phoenix. I'm gonna use uh, this M.2 drive. Not that that's gonna make the difference uh, because this I'm sure will work on an SD card as well. But as I've got a system already on here, I figured I'd try it. All right, so let's switch off and switch on. Okay, so that started up and uh, it needs a bit of an update, but I'm gonna leave that for now because uh, Chromium isn't on this, I think. So if I press the Windows key, start typing Chromium. You can see that nothing comes up. So let's go to the App Store and search for it here. There we go, Chromium and install. And so that's just finished. So let's close this bit and see if I can search it here. There you go, Chromium. And that's come up. Uh, let's just do NeoFetch just to show you what I'm running here. Uh, so this is Impish Indri, the latest version of Ubuntu, and uh, it's running GNOME 40.2, uh, overclocked to 22 gigahertz, and this is my 8 gig Pi. So let's try Lee PSP Video HDR and see how well it plays without doing anything to it at all. Okay, so I've selected 1080 full screen and let's put stats for nerds on. It often drops frames right at the very beginning, uh, that's normal. So it went a bit stuttery then, 33 frames dropped, 34 frames dropped. This is using the codec VP9, you can see the better, the superior codec. But weirdly, this is looking all right. Uh, let me concentrate on the video playing. Yeah, it's actually it's actually looking very clear and very smooth. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. Uh, it's this is a lot better than expected. It is playing at 30 FPS, but uh, that's looking pretty good. And that's not dropping very many frames at all. So 35 frames dropped uh, of nearly 2,000. It's just done a few more there. As the, um, the thumbnails came up, it went worse. So let's pause that uh, and let's just have a look in Chromium and see. I wonder why it's showing at 30 FPS because I'm sure I'd uploaded this at 60 FPS. 
28. Uh, it doesn't say on there. Oh, look, my thumbnail comes up over it. Okay, so that's interesting because this is a new install of Chromium and it does seem to be going all right full screen. It is running from an M.2 drive. Uh, it is overclocked and it is an 8 gig Pi. But in the past, I've often found it pretty bad. I'll try Raspberry Pi OS in a minute. Um, but let's have a look at this user agent switcher anyway. So if I do a search for user agent switcher, because to be fair, if we can have VP9, if we can have better quality in a 64-bit operating system, I'll take that. So here's user agent switcher, add to Chrome, add extension. Okay, so we can click on the icon. So we've got Android here, look. Click on that. Oh, and it only comes up with Android KitKat. Yeah, we'll give that a try then. Is that all I have to do? Yeah, it looks like it. Now, my only reservation about this method uh, was that if you then do a search, so if I do a search for, let's do BBC Sport, because what it will pick with Android, yeah, is a, is a kind of dumbed down version of the internet. Uh, and obviously Android KitKat was a mostly a touch-based operating system, but a portable operating system. If I call up Firefox, so on here, and do the same, BBC Sport. So you can see it looks different already. Let's go to the BBC Sport page and let's go back to Chromium and click on BBC Sport. So have a look at how this looks on Chrome. Oh, to be fair, maybe it detects resolution. Maybe it's all right. Let's agree to the, the cookie. So if I switch back to Firefox, no, it's the same version. So I was expecting it to be uh, a cut down version where you get a lot of these hamburger menus with like drop like, like this, where there's a, a drop down menu, you get the three lines. But uh, no, that's not, yeah, to be fair, that looks like just the normal way that BBC would, would show up on a desktop interface. Uh, so if I go for something like, well, I wanted to do YouTube anyway. So is that different? Of course, it depends what different websites detect and how they choose to display. Yeah, that's different, that. So if I go to Chromium, that's what it gave me as uh, my page. So if I just click on the ordinary YouTube bit, go back, click on the ordinary YouTube bit. So you can see that Firefox is giving me all of this on the left hand side, but on the, the mobile version, mobile.youtube.com. So it depends what it detects uh, on different websites. So my thought was, if you are gonna do this and if you are gonna use Chromium, uh, well, to be fair, it was pretty pretty easy to change the user agent. But if you were going to do this, I thought maybe just run Firefox for ordinary web browsing because I find Firefox a little bit quicker on certain things anyway. But Chromium with this fix should give you better YouTube playback. So you've got, you got all the options really. Right, so let's have a search. Yeah, see, even the, the layout's not as nice. But if it means the difference between getting decent playback, you know, if you're going to sit and watch uh, my Raspberry Pi playlist for uh, however many days that would take to go through. Uh, you want that full screen and uh, it would be nice to have it uh, running nice and smooth. So let's play this video. All oh, the settings is up here. Look, so yeah, everything is, everything's a bit different, um, but not in, a, not in a bad way, 1080. Yeah, well this is much more, more basic looking. Uh, so full screen. Right click and, oh, do I not get stats for nerds on this? I don't think I do, unless it's up here. Oh yeah, stats for nerds, look. I probably should have seen that before. So it is showing uh, codec, it still says VP9. So I kind of wasn't expecting it to do that. I was, I was thinking it was gonna go for the AC1. But it is playing smoothly but it is more compressed. Uh, so it definitely isn't as clean as the image should be. Uh, and when it was playing before, I think it was better. Still playing at 30 FPS, so maybe I did upload this video at 30 FPS. 
Yeah, that's odd. I, I wasn't expecting that. And if anything, it's dropped more frames. Uh, so I'd be interested what other people get results on this because I think it's nice to know that you know this is an option to be able to try. Yeah, I am definitely in Chromium because you can see it's lit up there. User agent switcher. So if I click on that, and it doesn't tell me what it's currently on. Oh, I suppose the AND there is standing for Android. Yeah, so if I click on that, and what else have we got? Chrome. So Chrome's the default. And then we've got iOS. How, how, about, how far back do they go back? So I, iPhone 6. Yeah, so KitKat's going to be way before that, I would have thought. Windows Phone, Firefox, Opera, Safari. Well, Windows Phone's going to be old. Windows Phone 8. Okay, so now if I go to YouTube, if I click back to that, yeah, it's definitely on WP7 still. So let's hit play and let's go. Oh, so also oh, only gives me 720 as, a, as an option, so that's maybe the reason to go for KitKat. Well, let's see how 720 plays. Let's see what codec it comes up with. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, well, it's 720, so it's going to look more compressed uh, and softer. But if I do stats for nerds, which I keep forgetting is at the top here, and hit OK, 1280 by 720, codex AVC1. So the KitKat one, unless it switched out of it somehow, so let's go back to that again, because it did quit out. So let's go extensions, user agent switcher, Android KitKat. Okay, so that's on Android KitKat now. That's showing up. Let's hit play. So now we get 1080, we can go right up to 4K. Uh, and we've also got stats for nerds here. Click OK, full screen. And we always drop some at the start, but that's still dropping more than it was with raw Chromium. Oh, but it's settled down now. And it is VP9. So it's not showing the AVC1. That's really weird. Uh, so there's maybe another combination of this. I probably need, I'm gonna run out of time today. Um, but uh, let me know in the comments what differences you find and uh, what systems work the best for you because it seems to be still using VP9. Uh, to be fair, in this version of Ubuntu, the YouTube playback at 1080 with VP9 will look the best I think I've seen uh, on something that's not been altered. Uh, it really was looking nice and crisp, so it's surprising. This is the beta version of Ubuntu. This hasn't been officially released yet, but I've got a separate video on that. Right, so I'm going to boot up in Raspberry Pi OS and give it a try and see what results I get in that. So I've shut down, so let's remove my M.2 drive and I'll just boot up from this 32 gig micro SD card in there and let's switch off and switch on again. Okay, so this is a completely fresh install of Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. There's no overclock or anything done to it and it's running from the SD card. So let's hit play and see how it copes. So this is 1080 full screen stats for nerd on. And we're dropping quite a lot of frames, 161 of 290. Is it gonna catch up? It is jerky though. You can see that it isn't pleasant to watch. There's quite a bit of tearing. Uh, overall, yeah, pretty disappointing. So let's try, let's pause that. So I'll add the user agent switcher, add extension, and pin that. And H264 Fi, what setting is that on, I wonder? So it's enabled at the moment, but nothing else is selected. So let's disable that anyway, and we'll change that user agent to the Android KitKat version. Okay, so I've tried to switch through all sorts of different systems, and I keep getting this uh, spinning wheel, black screen, uh, occasionally I can get it to play, but none of them has been good. Uh, so really, I think for YouTube, it's 64-bit uh, operating systems seem to be more compatible on the Pi. Uh, I mean, that performance I had from Ubuntu really surprised me. So that was VP9, 1080, and actually not dropping many frames at all, and it was looking decent. But as you can see from this, 
whatever's going on is just not working. I can't get any of it to work now. Uh, oh, we're back in. So I don't know what this is now playing as. So this is the Windows Phone 7 one. So you can see the resolution has gone really bad. Uh, if it will let me change to, it will only let me go up to 720, but I was, oh no, it will go up to 1080. I wonder if this is the Windows Phone 7 one. So there's 1080. Well, let's hit play. Oh no, it's playing. Yeah, it is really bad performance. So I think 32-bit just, just suffers a lot more. I mean, there's a lot of benefit to having 64-bit OS, and it definitely runs faster on the Pi. So I probably need to try this on 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS because uh, it works so well on Ubuntu, even without applying any of these effects or anything. Uh, so yeah, at the moment, Ubuntu is looking very good for YouTube playback, as well as obviously Phoenix Linux in my previous video. But uh, yeah, I hope all this helps. Let me know in the comments how you get on, what operating system you seem to find works better for it, what codec is working better. I mean, certainly VP9 does look a lot better uh, in general, but it really struggles, especially on the 32-bit OS on the Pi. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.